Oh, there we go. Woo! Welcome to KYD on a very windy day. Can you even see? This is, this episode is all about cooking and Trish has so oh. much to share with you. Oh my gosh, okay, we're gonna make a coleslaw. We're gonna make a Waldorf salad. We're gonna make a pasta salad. So you have three sides to go with main dishes. We're gonna grill some steak, we're gonna grill some chicken. Wow. We're gonna make broccoli grapes. And <laughs> we are gonna do a super famous potato. You've probably seen it before. Now you're gonna have the secret recipe. So let's get started. Well, we can't not mention the fact that Trish, I'm who's, sorry. who's right. been working on a cookbook for well over a year is now so close to being done. And in fact, if you want to RSVP your copy to learn more and get notifications as soon as it's ready, then just go to trishaleach.com and you can add your email and get all sorts of notifications. That's right. And you'll get a recipe yeah. and then my one cheat principle that will help you plan your meals for the week, mm -hmm. your shopping list, and also do a little pantry shopping so you save money, you use the things you already have yes. before you go to the grocery store because we all love Saving some cash. Well, and then also Trisha's spices. So you learn more about the spices and maybe you cook a little bit. Are you cooking with these at all? I'm gonna use one, but I wanna make sure that you today are walking away with things you can do immediately. And if you wanna know more about these shortcuts to flavor, as I'm calling mm -hmm. them, um, that's at trishaleach.com too. Okay. So anyway, let's okay. get. Let's go like, into the kitchen and make the size from yesterday. And then we'll meet you back out here in this very windy <laughs> patio so that we can grill some of this stuff. Okay. Yes. Okay, so next week we are gonna head out in a class B. So if you're not into cooking, join us next week. I get it, you're all in the adventure. If you want some really cool recipes, stick around, here we go. First one is a pasta salad. It's super easy, okay? This doesn't have to be hard. Buy yourself some fresh salad dressing. I always like the salad dressings in um, with the cold things because I find they taste better. And then one of my rules in cooking is color, okay? So if I have a bunch of green where I'm gonna put parsley, I'm gonna put green onions, I'm gonna put a little celery, um, I gotta put a little red pepper. Something has to pop inside of whatever I'm eating. There's gotta be a balance of color. And then if you want a mild cheese, throw in mozzarella. If you want a cheese that speaks to you, that gives you a little pow, uh, go for feta. So, um, and then I always like to add in mint. Mint is amazing. It's just amazing. Just a little bit will do you. You don't have to do a lot. So I don't know, that's probably like eight, 10 leaves for an entire pasta salad. And then if my house was burning down, I think I would go and get my zester. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I would run out immediately. But I love a zester because the flavor you get from lime juice, lemon juice is amazing, but it also waters your things down. You can get the same flavor from just the zest. I use citrus in almost everything I make. So anyway, I'm gonna cut all this up, I'm gonna throw it in here, and we're gonna have the easiest, yummiest pasta salad ready to go in a flash. Oh, and P.S., this is gluten-free. camera gets heavy. Let's talk about some more color. Shallots, you can use red onions too, but red onions are really pungent, and I feel that they're like, ah, they kind of take over the party. A shallot is like, hey, how's it going? So I like a shallot flavor better if I'm not cooking it. So here we go, a little shallot. When you zest a citrus, you wanna get this beautiful color, but you don't wanna go so far down into the white, that's called the pith, and it's very bitter and it's not very good. So just one swipe down will get you the zest. And if you, But if you go like this and grind it, then you're gonna have bitter flavor, and it kinda like makes your teeth feel a little weird. So anyway, that's just your tip. You see how I just got that off? Yeah. But I'm not gonna touch that white stuff. Mm -hmm. And there I am again. And there I am again. Little quick tip. If I'm making this and I'm not eating it for like a day, I wouldn't put this in. I put the olive oil on, I put a little bit of the sweet vinegar, but I wouldn't put the dressing because the pasta is just gonna soak it all up. It's a little stingy like that. It's like, no, I want the dressing. <laughs> so um, just hold on to this and put it on before you serve it. So, but since we're making it together, let's do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that looks good. Okay. Too. It's really good. Is it? And it's so easy. I didn't even make the dressing. Which is an easy 
pasta salad, but this thing, this is where it's at. These are little quart containers, I believe. You can get them on Amazon. I had like a whole stack of them delivered. I think the clear ones are actually from our favorite Thai food restaurant because we love their mushroom coconut soup. So I have a lot of these in the house. Uh, but anyway, these are the greatest thing to store in your fridge. You can transport them from your home fridge to your RV fridge and then you wash them and stack them and then they are easily stored away. So then you throw it in here and it looks like you just went to the grocery store and spent a bunch of money on a pasta salad. And really it took you about six minutes. This is one of the three salads you're making. Mm -hmm. You're gonna make two more salads mm -hmm. with the idea of like you're just putting things in your RV fridge. Mm -hmm. Speaking of the RV fridge, I should really have this conversation down in the airstream. These Dometic fridges that are in most RVs are absorption fridges, which means they run off of propane or they run off of electric. And the thing about an absorption fridge is it actually removes the heat to make it cold. So if you take a whole bunch of warm things and you put it in your fridge, it's gonna take that much longer to get the temperature because it has to remove all that heat. But if you move them from your fridge, I've noticed, this isn't like official scientific data, but I've noticed if you move it from your fridge into here, it gets the temperature faster because it doesn't have to remove that heat. But nonetheless, I think it makes sense to make a note, if you're a weekend warrior, if you're going out on Friday, to get this fridge turned on the day before because it takes about 24 hours to get it completely to temperature. And then when you load everything in your fridge, it's important to have a little bit of space on the outsides like this going around so that the air can move around the food. You don't want to just jam everything in there or it has a hard time. So just a couple quick tips on the RV fridge. Now back to the kitchen. Okay. We've shared this before. This is not a recipe. This is an assembly, okay? So um, get yourself some spicy barbecue sauce. You can even get sugar-free if you don't wanna waste a bunch of calories. Throw in your bottle of barbecue sauce and throw in some chicken breasts, like maybe four. I couldn't find four, so I found um, chicken tenders and these are like half breasts or something. So I'm gonna throw it all in there. Cook it for about 20 minutes. It should be totally fine. And then just, you know, pressure cook. 20 minutes and then take your forks and pull them apart. So we're gonna have coleslaw, which is really yummy, and some pulled chicken sandwiches. So you can do pulled chicken and you can put the coleslaw on top if you're, you're living on the edge. <laughs> really now as the official camera guy for Trisha, I can say that I'm having a hard time keeping up with all of the things that are going into certain of these dishes and we need to keep the video to a reasonable time. So, where should people go for these actual recipes on this? Ooh. What right? will How about have? like three day, three day trip? Like keepyourdaydream.com slash three day trip. Does that sound good? And then you can go there and then we can put all the ingredients so that we don't have to like forget anything. Okay, that's kind of what I'm thinking. Do you, do you like doing this together where we have to think of URLs on the fly? <laughs> <laughs> remember, remember the shenizzle <laughs> forward slash shenizzle? Okay. I'm making a dressing. Ooh. So Is this there's, for the coleslaw? Yeah, there's plain yogurt in there. There's lots of lemon zest. There's one squeezed lemon. There's mayo. Really? Yes. Really? Really. Um, hey, did you already okay. cut the cabbage though? <laughs> Who cut the cabbage? I don't know what that is. You don't know what what is? Quarter, quarter teaspoon. Oh, okay. When you make a dressing, you gotta just taste it along yeah. the way. Gotcha. So, um, so we're gonna taste it, and then hopefully we'll get some solid measurements for you. Mm. Might have been the hardest part of the cookbook. Mm. I don't measure anything. Yes. Wait, this will work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What spices were those? That was celery seed. Oh, oh, you said that. Mm -hmm. I didn't know if they were your spices right here. Hold oh, on. Did you tell people? No. We'll pull those out. Oh my gosh. This one's my fave. Sweet heat. It has a little sweetness. Everything is like pure and natural. No preservatives. I've been using these for the past, since we've been in Montana. That's when yeah. we created them with Brie from Olivelli. Mm -hmm. She helped me create them and package them and they're amazing. Yes. So anyway, jalapeno taco is my next favorite. You can mm -hmm. use it in everything. Enchiladas, tacos, ground beef. Uh, guacamole, like tons of stuff. Anyway, then we've got your go-to garlic salt because everybody needs a good 
go-to garlic salt with a little parsley in there so it's beautiful. This is really good for roasts, like if you're doing a pulled pork or something like What's that. that. Sorry, it's pecan coffee. I'm okay. shaking it around. I'm not yeah. even telling you what it is. And then this is like obviously, <laughs> I use this every single day. It's lemon herb. It's just the perfect blend of spices with salt and lemon extract awesome. and some garlic in there. So anyway, I use those all the time. Okay, this is the secret ingredient. A little bit of relish. Ooh. It like gives just the right amount of tang. It really makes you relish it. It does. But Good not too much. You don't want too much. What is that? That looks like, like a lot. One tablespoon for that whole thing. Oh, okay. That's probably one tablespoon. Okay. Okay. That's it. Kind of think of like a thousand island meets coleslaw. Okay. It's really good. Really? Mm -hmm. So what did you just put? Okay, you already said what you did and people can go to the recipe at three day trip. So. Yes. Wow. Please. Okay, it's good. Okay. So now what? Now we just throw it in. And the best part about coleslaw mm -hmm. is it gets better like if you make it first thing in the morning or mm. the next day, eating it the next day. Yes. Because all that water kind of needs to come out of the coleslaw. Mm. You mean the cabbage? Yes, thank you. You see, you take for granted that camera work. When Trish needs me to actually do something, this is the shot you get. <laughs> all right. All right, how come Mark doesn't do anything ever? Well. Mark's doing things all I the time. I am. I'm selflessly holding that camera. <laughs> okay, and it's not light either. Okay, so here's the thing. Hold on, let me get back to my station. Go out to dinner and get like inspiration. Go to your deli counter and go, oh, I could totally make that. And, or just get it from the deli counter if you wanna take a shortcut, okay? Um, you don't have to go through all of this. Maybe these are just ideas so you can go and find it at the deli. But this, I got inspired because we went out to Houston's for dinner and I was eating the coleslaw and I was like, Oh, I have to make this. And so, voila, I did. Um, but you just know the basics. Like in order to make a dressing, you need mayo, you need maybe some yogurt or do sour cream or, you know, just get used to the flavors that you really like. How do I add in sweetness? Oh, I can use agave. How do I add in a little kick? Oh, I can put this and that in. So um, really exploring your palate, what you like, get inspired and then try and make something at home. It's really fun. So um, look, we throw it in a baggie. That way all these little juices can start going to the bottom and then like later in the day you can flip it. So that's the best part about having these kinds of salads that really need to soak in the dressing inside of a baggie. It doesn't take up very much space in an RV fridge and you can move that marinade around. Move that marinade. Move that marinade. <laughs> A Waldorf salad is essentially like a fruit salad with chicken. And typically you are supposed to poach the chicken, but since we're RVers and we need things a little bit snappier than that, we're gonna use canned chicken, because why not? So I use two big cans of chicken. I think by the time we cut this up, it'll probably be a cup of halved um, grapes. You can use either color, the red or the green. Uh, you're gonna want some celery. You're gonna want some, of course, variety of color, remember? So I have these cute little red apples, they're so sweet. And then I'm probably gonna use half of this green apple. I think that that is a beautiful variety of colors. Most people will use regular sugar in dressings, but I prefer to use agave syrup. You could use honey too. It's just that I've come across a lot of people that are actually allergic to honey. And I love how easy agave syrup mixes and blends and emulsifies in with anything, like drinks, whereas honey is, you know, a little bit more firm. You have to, you really have to work that into a dressing. So, just a little squirt will do ya. Oh, from Minnesota now, are you? Minnesota, you know, we travel. <laughs> Pick things up along the way. <laughs> oh, don't you know. Don't you know. <laughs> okay, so nice fresh raisins, not ones that have been like, in here, I have an example. <laughs> These are like clumped and dried. Mm. That's gonna take a lot of work to get back to life. Yes. Whereas these are beautiful and fresh and they are all separate. Gotcha. So anyway, maybe like a fourth a cup. Okay. Do, 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 do. And then again, traditionally it's walnuts, I believe. 
I prefer pecans over walnuts. Mm -hmm. and walnuts aren't really my favorite nut. Anyway, but because I don't have them, almonds, that's what we're doing today. But these are slivered, and so they're probably not gonna hold up to the salad very well, so I'm not suggesting you use almonds. Pecans are really the way to go. But this is what I've got, and that's the greatest part about cooking. Just use what you've got. Mm-hmm, kind of like our bean. Start with where you are, with what you have. <laughs> okay. okay. Mark, you wanna taste? Uh, yeah. Okay. good? Not great. Yeah, that's good. So there you go, there's your third salad. So you could use this for lunch, you could put it in a um, tortilla, you could do wraps, you could do sandwiches, you could put it over spinach and just have it in a salad, it's really good. So use it as your dinner, use it as your side, whatever you'd like to do, it'll probably hold up for about two and a half, three days. Two minutes. Two minutes. It's gonna hold up for two minutes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yes. What I like about Trisha's recipes is it's all super fresh. Mm -hmm. Usually a lot of citrus, oh, citrus, yes. citrus. <laughs> so it tastes fresh. And it's kind of hard to pinpoint what's going on here. Yeah. Because you put the, what are these green things? Chives. Chives. The, well, it's no. It's the tarragon that's in there. Yes, there's always something that Trish does to make you like, what? what's in this? What's, what's in this? in there? So, there you go. All right, so we're gonna do some grilling now, huh? Okay, so earlier we made a chimichurri for you to marinate your steak. And you can pick any cut you'd like, but to feed a crowd, I like to use a skirt steak or a plain steak. Just remember, you need a really hot grill. It's done at about 125. You like to let it rest after it comes off the grill so all the juices get reabsorbed and cut against the grain. You'll have a beautiful steak dinner. Typically, a chimichurri comes from Argentina, and it's just herbs and some spice and some beautiful olive oil and maybe some red wine vinegar. But instead we're gonna use limes for our acid, we're gonna use some garlic, we're gonna use a little blend, and I have a little pepper here. And the reason I have so many peppers is when you order online, sometimes you don't know if you're ordering two peppers or you're ordering two pounds. I accidentally ordered two pounds of these chilies. So I'm like, what can I do with these chilies? As you can see, it was a little while ago, it was starting to get dry. So I'm gonna throw all these ingredients in here. I'm gonna blend it up a little. This is about five cloves of garlic. You really want it to be like garlicky because we're this is a marinade. So it's gonna cook off, some of the flavor's gonna cook off. But we're gonna throw in some olive oil to make it you know, a little juicy, throw in some kosher salt, and we're gonna marinate away. I literally put my hair back in a ponytail just so that we could talk out here. I would look like I'm in like a level four hurricane. <laughs> <It's> nuts. <laughs> so these are Hasselback potatoes and you've seen them before. You can either do them with large potatoes, and you make lots of little slivers and then you bake them and they kind of open up and those openings make the perfect place for butter and herbs and garlic to settle in. So I like to do them in miniature form. They're called Hasselback because they were created in Sweden in a town called Hasselbacken. I might be saying it incorrectly. But anyway, one of the best tips to use is use like a little wooden spoon and put it down because you wanna make the cuts almost to the bottom but not all the way through. Maybe you're really talented and you can use it without a spoon, but um, I usually end up breaking mine. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so anyway, do that. Line them up, you can bake them at 425. This is all gonna be on the recipe guide so you can check it out there. Um, I've also made them over the fire. They're so good. But obviously we're not doing open fires right now with all the wind. And, um, and then we're gonna transfer our broccoli in here too because it's crazy outside. The wind is insane. But you know what? We decided to record anyway because when you're out RVing, sometimes this is what you get. The problem, as you know, with grilling in these types of conditions is you lose some of the heat, especially if you're working with a griddle like the Blackstone. And so these little wind guards that I got directly from their website, this is actually for the 22 inch Blackstone. We have the 17. I just put them on the sides. This has prevented the wind from getting underneath that griddle and it keeps it nice and hot. And then I just recently got an email about how do we clean the Blackstone. You saw when we opened the video, just water and a wood or a regular spatula. And we just pour, get it super hot, pour the water on, and then we just scrape it all in the back, flip it over, put it in its case, it's good to go. Just a couple tips on the Blackstone.
one of the things I talk about in the cookbook is citrus is your secret weapon. I love putting it on the grill. It gives it an amazing flavor and it like makes all the juices come out. So I'm gonna throw a couple of these limes on there and then we're gonna use it to finish off the broccoli. Jim, did you sign up for Jim? Oh uh, yeah. Okay, when you get done with Jim, buy some duck food, okay? Okay, here you go. Take okay. this. Okay. Yeah, steak. Um, <clears throat> Any special instructions on the broccoli? Just, you know, big heads. Oh, you've done that for me before. Big heads of broccoli. Mm -hmm. um, we're not gonna be able to put all this on one plate for you because everyone's eating it as it's being made. <laughs> Can I eat these more? Can I eat more? Sure. Dad, do you want to see a talk? No. I laugh so hard when I watch this. Do you ever do that? I'm gonna mix in, you can use whatever herbs you have. You just have parsley, throw in parsley. I just so happen to have parsley and some basil. Um, I'm not gonna put cilantro in because that's gonna bring it in a totally different direction. Um, and, oh, I have some chives. Mm. Mm. Now, cooking these for a family, mm -hmm. I would make twice the amount mm -hmm. um, because if you have any leftovers mm -hmm. in the morning, you can put them on your Blackstone with some mm -hmm. fried eggs and mm -hmm. you, can just, you can smash them. Mm -hmm. You take your spatula and you smash them down and then okay. you fry them on both sides and they're like these little potato cakes. Well, remember the breakfast that the Clements and the Thompsons made at the tailgate event? That was amazing. They made avocado toast with a fried egg on top, all on their Blackstone, but the secret ingredients was um, everything bagel on mm -hmm. top. It, it was, made it so good. It was fantastic. So good. Oh yeah, that's a great serving thing. Yeah. We'll just put that right on the table. And boom, you're done. It's not that cold. It's cold. It's not that cold. And we're about to eat cold things. The bowls. Okay, that was a lot of cooking. <laughs> and I think it would be helpful. It was a lot of eating. <laughs> it was a lot of eating. It was a lot of eating. I think it would be helpful if maybe you kind of broke it down to see how someone could tackle a three day weekend using these recipes. Break it down, town. Break it down. Break it down. Okay, so what I gave you were a bunch of separates. When you go to buy an outfit, right, you buy separates. You buy a t shirt, you buy pants, and together you make an outfit. It's kind of like meals. Yeah. You have separates, you make a meal. So mm -hmm. there are three sides. We showed you three different ways to make meats, proteins. Uh, we did a broccoli, we did a potato. So you can take those things and you can figure out where to plug them in on your three day weekend. But really what this is all about is so that whomever cooks in your house is not tied to the tiny kitchen. Mm -hmm. Doing dishes in kind of um, a tight environment or I mean grilling is wonderful, but try to grill just maybe twice in a three day weekend. Yeah. So you're not just constantly cooking. And if you have a family, we've gone from five people down to three, but when we had five people, we needed food on hand all the time. Well, and I think that's what's good about the recipes that Trish shared mm -hmm. is that she makes like that Waldorf, Waldorf <laughs> so hard to say. chicken salad, Waldorf. Waldorf. but then put it in a container and then the next day, Caleb and I were in the kitchen and we open up the fridge and we're like, ooh, that's there. Yes, the pasta <laughs> is quite delightful to come home to a, a nice home cooked meal from a loving mother. Oh, mm -hmm. We can have a little snack. And yeah. by having all these foods in the containers that you use, mm -hmm. it means that like I'm not just like grabbing easy, unhealthy things. Yes. I'm grabbing grabbing actual food. Right. And on a camping trip, that's even more important because right. there's a lot of things going on. As people are doing different activities or you're hiking or kayaking, you're out and about, people are maybe eating at different time periods. Totally. And so it's great to have all this stuff just ready to go. Yeah. And one other shortcut that you could think about is maybe on your first night coming in, you bring in a pizza or we like to bring tamales, frozen mm -hmm. tamales with us. And we throw them in the steamer, like in your instant pot or on the stove mm -hmm. and boom, you have a fast dinner. So just think about those times when you're camping and you need things quick. What are you going to grab? Yeah. And spending, um, I don't know, maybe two hours in the kitchen preparing like maybe three things in advance is going to save you hours. I'm not joking, mm -hmm. hours at a campsite yeah. between cleaning, cooking, setting up, tearing down, because you can't just leave stuff outside. There's animals. Yeah. So anyway, we just hope that you pull one little tidbit out of this video to make your camping easier and 
more flavorful. Yeah, well, and too, some of these recipes might you might look at it and be like, hey, that's that's a lot of ingredients for camping, right? Because really? you know, you think about camping, you think like, hey, Miller Lite and hot dogs, and that's, I like hey, I like Miller Lite and I hot, like dogs. hot dogs, <laughs> right? But yes. well, sometimes we're out for an extended period of time, or you're going out on a six week trip. I got an email from yesterday, someone mm -hmm. going out on a six week trip. I mean, yeah. You can't eat hot dogs and, and Miller Lite for like six weeks. Well, maybe people maybe are like, you yes, can. you can. Yes, yes you, you can, can actually, right? <laughs> but uh, I do hope that you know you got some ideas from Trish as yeah. to how to add big taste in a small space. And if you want the Trisha's meal planning sheet, then you can get this when you RSVP to the cookbook, which is at trishaleach.com. That's right. And then we, and this whole meal plan, mm -hmm. where is that? That's at keepyourdaydream.com forward slash three day trip. Three day trip. You can get this breakfast too. There's granola on top of the Yeah, Yeah, we shared a little bit more stuff over there like the broccoli and some other things that we didn't make it in this video. But <laughs> anyway, so that's it for the cooking segment and uh, the announcement that we're getting very close to the cookbook being so ready. So close. And then next Sunday's episode, we uh, first of two episodes in the class B. And then we actually get in the Airstream and head out east to yes, we have a surprise. continue our season of motorized RVing. But first we have to get there. So yeah. a lot more to come. Uh, quite possibly the most entertaining season in KYD history. I'm uh, pretty Maybe big. interesting. Maybe interesting. Interesting, maybe entertaining <laughs> and interesting, I think, go hand in hand. <laughs> all right, that's all we're going to uh, allude to at this moment. We're so glad you're here, and we'll catch you next Sunday. See ya. Okay, oh, Charlie. Okay, okay how's, the, how's the bowl? It's really good. But so the homemade granola is really good. I'll share that one with you. Mmm. So your your idea for the acai bowl is for like a breakfast one morning? A breakfast one morning, mm -hmm. or if you're traveling with teenagers who constantly need more food, you can have them for lunch. Or husbands. We put a scoop of protein powder in there. It does taste good. Mm-hmm. Vanilla protein, protein powder. Yes. Pretty good. Yes.